Christ my King, through eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. Christ the Lord, bound to Him eternally, my strong cord, overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword, standing on the promises of God. Savior as my all in all, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God, oh, standing. United Methodist Church. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A lot of rejoicing be done. We are starting Advent season today. It's the very first week of Advent season. Can't believe it already. I uh, hope we had a good Thanksgiving. Uh, it sounded like we uh, had some good time with family. Some good memories were made. and It's always good to be in fellowship with one another. So, <laughs> uh, What did we survive? Black Friday? Good gracious. Anyways. <laughs> So yeah, a lot of things, a uh, busy season. Uh, as you can tell, the church is a little bit different than it was last week, and, and part of the fun is decorating. I got to see a little bit of the, the Nelson crew here uh, this week, <laughs> working together. Gary, we had uh, some, some farmers put this together, <laughs> and I think it looks wonderful. I think it looks wonderful. So anyways, uh, we've got a couple of announcements coming forward. Uh, Bible study is at 11 o'clock on Wednesday, followed by our after-school program, Wednesday Warriors, uh, over at New Hope, and Thursday is Food Pantry, 9 to 11, and then it looks like next Sunday, uh, Christmas, brunch, cookies, packaging for the shut-ins after worship, so uh, that's something to look forward to, I'm excited for that. We're going to bring baked goods to those who can't make it to church, whether it's for COVID reasons or, you know, the health reasons, they just can't get here, so that'll be nice, Christmas spirit. Anything that needs to be brought up? Yes. Uh, I don't recommend that. Uh, Charlie Spindle, who's uh, still not doing very good. He's having problems getting up there working with him on it, but it just isn't uh, been helping a lot going through therapy and doing radiation. Charlie Spindle? Spindle. Spindle. Okay. Oh, thank you. God bless you. All righty. Is he home? No. No. They're fighting with the insurance company. They've got to keep on putting, asking in different places if they have an opening for him. Because mm -hmm. he's doing a 24 hour care. Okay. Amen. So lift him up in prayer. Thank you. Is he 
You mind if I keep this up here for a little bit? <laughs> Thank you. I don't know, that's a right handed thumb, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry. Hey, no, you're fine. <laughs> All right. Thank you. That might be the best joke you heard today, so appreciate that one. <laughs> Anything else that needs to be lifted up? All right. Uh, if there's nothing else, let us open our bulletins and join the preparation of our hearts as we get ready for worship this morning. God, I give you my heart, my mind, and my attention. Help me listen to your calling for me today. I'm walking in here ready to receive your spirit. I'm walking out of here changing for the better. Amen. So our first thing today is take time to be holy. It's on 395. past few years and know that there is more to face before us. We don't know if we have the strength to withstand what might be around the next corner. And we wonder who will stand with us, who will have our back, who will occupy our corner. Who is with us? That is what we begin to wonder these days. 
Who will light our way and chart our course? Who is on our side? Who will become us? Who will become us home again? Home. The prophet Jeremiah speaks of a branch that will be raised. Jesus spoke of a son of man that will descend. Both point to a hope. A hope that calls us home, our true home, where, we, where we're welcomed and loved and included, where there is justice and equality and peace. It's time, this Advent season, time to go home. We light this candle as a sign of our hope. Our strong hope that there is a way to go home, to the home in Christ. And it starts with us, and it starts here, and it starts now. It's time to go home. What are those awards given for acting? Uh, the Oscars? Grammys? <laughs> I, I wasn't was acting. <laughs> <laughs> that was all truth. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All righty. So, now that our service has started, let us join together in the call to worship. Find on your bullets and go to the screen. In the midst of darkness, God brings a new light. Thanks be to God of the light. In the midst of confusion and fear, God brings hope and peace. Thanks be to the God of hope. In the midst of strife and stress, God comforts and soothes us. Let us praise God who truly loves us and brings us to new life. Interesting. <laughs> you know, there's a number five here. I'm glad you didn't read that. <laughs> That's different than this. And... Anyways, <laughs> you gotta set the bar real low, otherwise people expect good things. <laughs> Let us join together in the opening prayer. Dev Dear Heavenly Father, help me to hear your voice. Touch me once again. Give me the courage to be your beloved. Give me the courage to choose joy. I need you now this Christmas. Be born in me and in me today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, now's the time of the service for joys and concerns. Is there anything we need to lift up in prayer? Yes? Um, the family of Steve Sprady, he, Adam last week, he had told him in the pneumonia he passed on things. All right. What was the last name? Scrady. Scrady. All righty. Yes, yeah, so I'll lift him up. Anything else? Continue prayers for Joan. And Lynn. Hey Amen. You can't escape our church family. Pour out love. <laughs> yes. Uh, my grandpa, who's in the mid 90s, decided he wanted a boot like Connor used to have, so he decided to fracture his ankle. Oh. So, probably more prayers for my grandma than my grandpa, but. <laughs> <laughs> What's his name? Roger Simon. All right. A, fract a fractured ankle. Yes? I've got a granddaughter, Haley, who's 11 years old, had to have emergency surgery for an appendectomy uh, on Tuesday. She's home, doing well, even made it to Thanksgiving dinner. So mm -hmm. nothing stopped her from eating. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be a good Methodist. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Alyssa's aunt passed away this week, so uh, prayers for her. And I just love, I love seeing Christmas lights up. I love seeing Christmas commercials and the new TV shows and the old TV shows. And 
this season of Christmas and Advent, uh, it brings a little bit of joy. It gives us a little bit more hope with being the theme of today. And, and uh, just thankful for that, especially after the rough years we've had. And it's nice just kind of get grounded again in our faith. And yeah, so joys for Thanksgiving. And All right, I, <laughs> I bought these strands of likes if you drove past the house. I talk a big talk about decorating the house <laughs> and getting a Christmas Christmas spot and then, uh, decorations up. And we've got two strands of lights hanging. They're measly stands right around backwards. And Alyssa's embarrassed by them as we drive by. Good Lord, they can't even cover more than those pillar there. <laughs> oh, man. Let us... Go to the throne of grace if there's no, nothing No, I do else. have one more thing. Yes. It's actually a hallelujah. Mm -hmm. um, on Thursday, I drove to Viroqua, and I drove back the next day. And that's the farthest I have driven. And actually, that was kind of a big drive for me because it was on January or June 15th of 2020 when I had a neuro event coming back from Viroqua into La Crosse. And so that, that was a, a major thing for me. Amen. Amen. All righty. Anything else? How are those cows doing over there for us? Oh, they're doing well. They're eating a lot. <laughs> they're eating a lot. <laughs> are they producing milk? Oh, yes. Oh, they're yeah. producing okay. milk. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Mm -hmm. Let us pray. Father, though there's so many people who want to lift up to you today in prayer, people who need healing, need comfort, need your peace, Lord, we lift up the family of Steve as he passed this week on Thanksgiving. Lord, we, uh, we, we pray that you continue to lift up the Hickok family as well with Amanda's passing. God, we pray for you to, to fill their voids in their hearts, to help them in this time of grieving. To hold them together when it feels like they're falling apart. God, lift them up with your love. God, we pray for continued healing for Joan and Lynn. Continued healing for Haley after her surgery. Lord, we pray for healing. Uh, uh, all those who are facing this COVID pandemic right now, Lord. Who need restoration. Who need revival. God, help restore their physical health. God, we, we pray for Roger as they... Seems to be copying his grandson there uh, with the fractured ankle. Lord, uh, we pray that you can heal his foot and his bone, and, and Lord, help him get back to 100%. God, we pray for uh, Alyssa as she is mourning right now the, the passing of her aunt as well. And be with your entire family as they are grieving. God, what a, a blessing it is that you continue to give us signs of progress and, and signs of newness, Lord, and, and we're we're thankful for Marla as she's getting a little bit better every day. We're thankful for her drive to Viroqua. Lord, these signs that, that are just incredible to experience. We thank you for your goodness. God, as we are starting a brand new season here of Advent, we pray for a new season in our hearts as well. Sprout up from us life or dead ends lurk. Give us signs of hope, things to look forward to. Help us get to Christmas prepared and ready to receive your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray all this in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All righty. So, if that's all right, we'll just skip on that. There's a hit the message here in the back that talks about signs and Christmas signs. And, and we know it's Christmas when we see the, the lights on the trees and lights on our house. And, and we know it's Christmas when Santa's in the stores and stuff. There's a lot of different signs about Christmas being around. And, and the Bible talks about a bunch of signs that happen when Jesus is going to come around again too. And it talks about how when he comes again, how we can hold our heads up high with confidence knowing that we're going to be okay. And that's in the book of Luke. But we'll get to that some other time. So, 
We have our next Christmas hymn. This is the first one of many. Angels we have heard of on high. 238. lectionary it splits things up into three different years so last year we talked about the entire Christmas story and maybe you guys are familiar with the actual Christmas story of the the wise men following the star and, and finding Jesus in Bethlehem and, and this year it covers some of the Old Testament prophecies leading up to Christmas so so Christmas is actually a, a illustration of God fulfilling his promise it's a sign of how God keeps his word and his word starts here in Jeremiah chapter 33. So we're going to go way back to Jeremiah, but this still has 100% to do with Christmas today. So, all righty. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the good promise I made with the people of Israel and Judah. In those days and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout up from J David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. In those days Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. 
This is the name by which it will be called, the Lord our righteous Savior. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, there's a, a story of an old man who was going out to do some Christmas shopping one day. You've got to get presents for the grandkids. and He went on a drive into the town. While he was away, his wife was watching the news, and suddenly a, a big news stream came on and said, Hey, if you're traveling on I-5, you've got to watch out because there's a car traveling the wrong way. Well, his wife knows exactly where that is. That's exactly the route his husband, or her husband took. So she asks on the phone and, and gives him a warning. She says, Hey, be careful out there. There's a car in the wrong lane. Husband says, oh, you're telling me there's hundreds of them. <laughs> All right, that one was a whiff. <laughs> Let that one go. All right, anyways. Goodness gracious. So we are in the, the book of Jeremiah today, and, and this whole season of Advent is a season of waiting. That's what Advent means, to wait, to prepare ourselves for the coming of Christ. Because for Christmas, as Christians, it has a little bit more weight. It means a little bit more to us. And when we understand just how great that the birth of Christ really is, that how much God loves us to come down into this broken world, be a part of it, live amongst us, show us the way, give us the truth, it's incredible. So by the time that we actually get to Christmas, over this season of Advent, we're going to have a little bit more appreciation, a little bit more gratitude, more knowledge, but more understanding of how much we have a God who loves us. And reasons for hope. So today we're in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33 here. And this civilization that he lives in, the society that Jeremiah is a part of, is not a very good society. The Israelites at this time that he's preaching to have fallen away from the word of God. Remember, the Israelites are God's chosen people. They've been blessed immensely. God has used them to do incredible things. But over time, they have strayed away from what God has asked them to do. They started worshiping false idols. They started lusting over things that should not be in their hearts or their minds. They have started to disobey from God's word. Now they still had the temple in their town. And because they had the temple and they went to go worship and sacrifice there once a week, they thought that they'd be in the clear for the other six days. But, but it's very clear that they're not in the clear for anything that they're doing here. So Jeremiah is a prophet of the, of the Lord. This was a man who was living in obedience with God. God would call him to go somewhere, and when he went there, he would open up his mouth, and the words that he was saying and preaching to people were not his own, but were instructions that God was giving to him. He was a tool for the Lord, and he gave people a bunch of warnings and a bunch of prophecies. Now, unlike uh, some of the other prophets here, Jeremiah, his, his prophecies weren't very uplifting, they weren't very encouraging, but instead he was warning the people of Israel. If you guys continue to live the way you are, we're going to be overthrown. This city that we're enjoying right now in Judah, this is going to be overcome. Our enemies of Babylon, they're advancing, they're marching towards us. They're going to wreck our city. They're going to get into our walls. They're going to destroy our homes. And the, the ones who are left alive, they're going to be held captive under the Babylon Empire. Can you imagine why this will get them into trouble? You know why this would lead him into to bad places here. People didn't like this message. They didn't like hearing that they were turning away from the Lord, that they had to change their ways, and, and they needed to repent of their sins. This wasn't encouraging. It actually landed Jeremiah in prison. So there is a bunch of chapters. We're in chapter 33. Chapter 32 is where we hear a little bit of a change in his message. Because he preaches over and over again, we need to change, we need to, to listen to the Lord, our God, get back in line with what God has told us to do, or otherwise we'll be overthrown. Here in 33, we can see a couple parts here, and I'm just going back to the beginning part here to add a little context. This is what it says. It says, For this is what the Lord God of Israel says about the houses in the city and the royal places in Judah that have been torn down and used against the siege ramps and by the sword that fight with the Babylonians. They will, be, they will be filled with dead bodies. The people I will slay in my anger and wrath. I will hide my face from this city because of its wickedness. But here's where he changes his prophecy. This is where his doom and gloom changes to hope and restoration. And it tells us a little bit about the God that we serve today. Nevertheless, I will bring health and healing to it. I will heal my people and I will let them enjoy an abundance of peace and security. 
that even after this is in ruins, the city is gone, our people are held captive, that there will be a day when people will come back and enjoy peace and security. And in fact, Jeremiah here, he knows the, Babylon, the Babylonians are getting closer. They can see that they're surrounding the city, that everybody here knows that the days are coming to an end. The chapter before this, he goes out and he buys a plot of land. This is the faith that he has. He knows that he's going to lose this land. The houses are going to be gone. He goes out and it says here, For this is what the Lord Almighty God of Israel says. Houses and fields and vineyards will again be bought in this land. That there's going to be a day when this means something. Houses will be brought back forth. Life will come from death. And if that's not the season of Advent, the season of Christmas, then I don't know what is. So not only does it say that property is going to be brought back, but he also says in this chapter 33 that life and, and daily life itself will be brought back. It says, Yet in the towns of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem that are deserted, and inhabited by neither people nor animals, there will be heard once more the sounds of joy and gladness, the voices of bride and bridegroom, the voices of those who thank offerings to the house of the Lord, saying, Give thanks to the Lord our God Almighty, for he is good, and his love endures forever. Now, this context, you can see, it is important. Because when he preaches this message right here, it's in a moment where, where he knows that things are going to come to an end, that things aren't looking good right now, there's no reason for, help, for hope. And sometimes we are most receptive to the good news, to God's promise that he has for us, when we're at a low point, a valley, when things aren't good. When someone gives you a promise, it holds weight when you desperately need that promise to come true. We're a little bit more receptive to this. So the first verse here in 14 says, The days are coming, declare the Lord, when I will fulfill the good promise. I will fulfill the promise that I gave to Israel and the people of Judah. Now what is that promise that he says? What is the promise he says he's going to fulfill? Well, the promise is all the way back in 2 Samuel. If you remember when David was made a king, he was a shepherd boy, that God called into his ministry to use him as a tool. This is what 2 Samuel says, The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish your house for you. When your days are over and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to secede you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish a throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father and he will be my son. When he does wrong, I will punish him with a rod, wielded by men, with floggings inflicted by human hands. But my love will never be taken away from him, as I took it away from Saul, who I am to remove before you. Your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. So even though that they were going to be overcome, and David's ancestors were going to be removed from the throne, they thought that the prophecy was done, there's no way that God has this under control. This is where everything ends right here, when the Babylonians take our city. God promised to David way back then, that no matter how things look, that your kingdom will reign forever. The love that I have for you will not fade, will not change, but instead you're going to see revival. And in fact, we see another passage here in the book of Isaiah, Oh, if I can get there. Oh, maybe not. Well, I'll find it in a little bit. <laughs> there are another passage that talks about the sprout of life that comes up from David's ancestors. I work on my bookmarks a little bit more. Fell on the floor. Oh, goodness gracious. All right, so we are back here in the book of Jeremiah. Let's go back so we're on here. So that's the promise that he says, that even when it looks like there's going to be a dead end, things can't change, they can't get better, I am still going to be on the throne forever. That's the promise he gave to David and his ancestors. The next verse says, In those days and at that time I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. The people desperately needed to hear this because the promise is that David's ancestor is going to rule and there's going to be salvation, a new chapter that they've never seen before, blessings and abundance, peace and prosperity. And when that time comes, we're going to know that the God who sits on the throne is still watching over us. He still cares for us. He loves us even in these dark, dark days. 
And it says, in those days Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called. The Lord of our righteousness, or the Lord of righteousness, our Savior. You know, we as Christians, we hear this Christmas story of Advent, and we look back at what the people of Israel were doing, and they lived in a broken world, a time that desperately needed peace and healing and safety and security. And it's not much different from where we are today. They were at a dead end. There was nothing that was going to change, nothing getting better. And when it looked like things were hopeless and things couldn't be used for God's goodness, God still said, I will keep the promise that I gave to you. I'm a God who is going to keep my word. And here in the book of Isaiah, this is what's applicable for us, especially when it feels like we're at a dead end. You know, it seems like nothing can change in our jobs, our relationships, our health report, finances. The list goes on and on, wherever our dead end is right now. It says, forget the former things and don't dwell on the past. Forget what leads you to think that, that you can't be changed, things can't be different, that I'm still not in control. So see, I am doing a new thing. Just like that bookmarker in the place that I can't find where it says, I will sprout up new life, a branch from the line of David. I will do a new thing in a dead stump. This verse tells us that I am doing a new thing, and it springs before you. Do you not see it? I'm making a way in the wilderness the desert, the desolate, I will provide safety, security, a way for your next chapter where the God who comes on Christmas Day and reminds us that he still loves us today is right with us right now through the season of Advent. And streams in the wasteland, the wild animals honor me, the jackals, the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness, streams in the wasteland to give you drink to my people, my chosen people, I form myself that they may proclaim my praise. We have a God who gives us life, who honors his promise, who makes a way for us when things look like it's a dead end. And just like the city of Judah was overthrown by Babylon, on Christmas Day, God claimed his promise. It was truth, and the people knew that the God that was uh, with them then is with them now. So what are we going through this season of Advent, especially after the, the year that we've had? What are the things that we really don't think can change? What do we think that God's not working through? Because that promise that he made to them, it's the same promise that he makes to us. I'm doing a new thing right now. I'm making a way for you. Have that hope this week as you go out. Have that hope and stand on your faith and watch and see how God uses it to transform your life. Amen? Amen. Amen, all right. Uh, <laughs> Alyssa told me she was going to get bookmarks for me, too, for Christmas present. <laughs> Anyways, what do we have next here? Offerings. offerings, tithes and the offerings. Can we have the ushers please come forward? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. The last of the day is on 2.13. Lift your heads, you mighty kids. <coughs> Church.